the, the groove. groove. Lost yeah, in baby. The groove. Oh my god. I don't think I'm stoned enough for this, honey. I don't feel like I have enough energy. Like I am literally going on 14 days of work. I've just been working for the best like just 14 days. You know, no no break, no nothing. And um <sighs> I feel like it's I just snorted like an ounce of cocaine. Yeah. I found some today. Whoa. I'm not going to. If you want to get down, get out cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> we had that playing in the restaurant. Cocaine. We had that playing in Black Flamingo. Uh, this weekend was grand opening and we had that playing like during our shift. And then we were in the kitchen and just all of us were just like, da na na na. That's cocaine. Sweet that it played at work. Yes, I fucking loved it, bro. So was it on the radio, or did somebody put it on? No, we had a band. We had um, Mount oh. Sinai, uh, which is from Miami. We had uh, the magic. I think they're called the uh, Magic S- School Bus. Magic School Bus. And I think Star Gazer or something. They were really good, though. Messing with my stuff. I was like, I'm still, I'm still getting used to my new slash temporary studio. Environment. Yeah. I mean, you're still getting used to your, you know, two job lifestyle. It's kind of, it's kind of really wild because I had one of my coworkers, bless her soul. um, She sits right next to me and she's like, it's like, you seem really happy, you know, and it's really odd when you're able to do something that you want to do. It feels so fucking good. And to have a boss that appreciates your work and your craft and, you know, to be a part of something that's more than yourself. I'm blabbling. I, I got to shut the fuck up in a minute, but you're not blabbling. That's what we're here to do is to uh, talk. Entertain. I, like, I mean, I'll just, if you want me to say stuff too, you know, I, it was really bothering me that you weren't feeling like excited. You weren't feeling stimulated. You weren't getting to make any connection, show people your, you know, your skills aside from just your nine to five job. Like it bothered me a lot that I I didn't know what to do as a friend other than to like, you know, listen, but like I, it sucks because we live far apart. Like I don't, have like right. I can't share my resources with you. Like I can't be like, well, I know some people that work at this place. Like I seriously like it bothered me, and so it's really important and amazing that you that I'm seeing this change in you. Like you know, with I mean, I see it in your face. I mean, right it's about. Now. Fu- I mean, it's about like He's fucking happy. time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like my friend is cries. happy again. Well, because you know the thing is. I don't really open up that much, but, you know, people that have been listening to this podcast for about, I worked in kitchens for about six years and I was never appreciated. I mean, the last place that I worked with, I will not mention this name on their podcast. The man that I worked with was a homophobic monster. He was racist and he was a piece of shit and he treated me like a fucking insect. And he never gave me the respect that I deserved. The amount of hours I would sit there prepping to make sure that we were ready for massive shifts. The times that I twisted my shoulders, which I still have pain in my back to this day, going up and down a ladder, you know, bringing down kilos of of dough and wings and all this stuff. And his respect to me was, oh, by the way, make sure to fire Dave before the holidays. My manager told me this like a few days before the holiday and I was like, I'm out. And to be now in this place and to finally like feel the respect. I mean, there was some conflict in at the beginning. I mean, because, you know, it's kind of weird when you put yourself in an environment, a kitchen, like you become like the project. You are the experiment. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah, it's more of like an experimental job as compared to doing the same thing every single day and like using a script that someone has decided for you to say over and over and over again. I know 
when I worked at my job and we had just this client after client after client, 16 to 20 clients, you know, bam, 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 bam. You get to that point where somebody says like, have a great day. And you say like, you know, have a great night. And it's like actually the morning shift. And you're like, fuck. what I And like, everybody's like, it's okay. Or they say like, <laughs> they're like, okay, like, um, have a great time on your trip. And you're like, you too. And they're like, I'm not going on a trip, you know? And you're just like, shit, I just, I've been saying the same thing over and over and over again, that it's lost any type of like meaning and like genuine, like, it's just, it's not, it's unhuman. That's, I mean, that's what we were so upset about, you know, when we talked a few weeks ago is like, it's unhuman, like to just, and that's pretty much what it takes sometimes to like survive. Fuck Henry Ford. to kind of just turn off like the human part of yourself, you know? Yeah. I'll say it again. Fuck Henry Ford. I mean, the motherfucker came up with the nine to five, but the all honesty, you know, it's, it's all about being able to understand that getting to certain places is very hard and it's very difficult and the the truth is it's very easy to fail it's very easy to slip into suicide or to slip into very dangerous paths such as addictions but i don't think it's necessarily strength i just feel that it's the will that it's going to happen just holding on just a little bit longer Having, yeah. like, some type of faith, I know. To a certain extent, yeah. You need to have a certain... I'm not trying to get all religious and stuff, but honestly, like, well, you not, do need yeah. you need to have some type of a faith or drive or a will. <clears throat> I think, like, there's a lot to be said about just, like, believing that, like, things can go well. Just, like, hoping for the best. I, yeah, I mean, without... I mean, people can do that just in general. You don't have to have like a, a religious God or whatever to do that. No. But I'm saying like, you know, just like, just believing that shit's going to work out can be really, really powerful. As I say that, like, I know that I haven't always acted that way. Like, there's definitely like a moment in my life where I felt like cursed or like doomed. And so... I, I mean, not doomed forever, but just like I, I was pretty sure like, hey, shit's not going to turn around right now. You know, <laughs> like I was like, I could see how maybe a few years from now, like I can work this into something. But like at the moment, life blows. OK, and it's not going to take any measure of positive thinking. I don't know. I feel like it did take positive thinking in order to get there. But what it really took was like hard work. And, and, and just like focusing drive. and not letting like the the emotional aspect of it overpower like what you need to get done. Like it was like I had to like turn off. I had to turn off and just work, you know, which I guess is like what what you do all the it's, time. It's, I, I mean, I did it for years, too. It's like the it's like the, the dumbest joke. It's like you can be the person that drives a car with the manual or the automatic. You choose. Yeah. They're both going to be enjoyable to certain types of people. But if you put the wrong types of people in those type of cars. Well, I mean, these moments are when I had to do uncreative jobs. Correct. You know, jobs that had nothing to do with who I am. Like, it took no skill, no personal talent, like no. Humanity. Yeah, no humanity. Like, it's just like, bam, like, here we, here's your fries. I mean, I'm joking. Fries are great, but. You know, <laughs> it was just, yeah, it's just a script, the scripty jobs. I was, um, I was looking up, you remember, I, I told you about the story of the Karen. <clears throat> do, do you want me to do? Damn. Oh. Yeah, man. You want to go Karen right now? No, no, no. Well, there was the story I was telling it's, you. We were kind of I would like the story, but I was like, are we going to do this story? I mean, we needed to do it. Did we never do it? No, we never did it. Cause I mean, we talked about it last week. And we did the recording last Sunday. So, Damn. yeah. No, I no. Well, it's it, just because we didn't we didn't cast over the weekend. We switched our date to today, which right. like worked really well for both of us because you have your new job. I got a new job too. Uh, so that we can talk about that too. 
Oh my um, god. Yeah. Just uh hint hint the nanny. Just throwing that. <laughs> okay. What? Does she work? Is she a Shh. bridal consultant? What is she? Yeah. I mean, there was a whole like theme of like the intro to the nanny. I thought she was a nanny. Right, but in the pilot episode, she works in a bridal shop with her boyfriend, and then her boyfriend dumps her, and then she goes selling makeup, and then she sells makeup to this guy, and then he- he, sounds like me. Yeah, and then she becomes a nanny. Anyway, going off topic, but um, (laughs) get into this story. I I sent you a text message. Oh, yeah. Do you want me to read it or are you going to read it? I, whatever you want. I can I can read it. I read um, it because you you probably know it a little better than I do. But I read this. I want to say I read this message as I was falling asleep at night and it really struck a chord. It, it yeah, and I think it was very open minded of you to to look at it this way, you know. So go ahead. Thank you. When I arrived at the Publix. And I got Which out of my car. Store. Yeah, and down here in Florida and some other states. We like to call it pubics. Um, <laughs> it's so bush. And um, bush. I got out of my car and I noticed in the parking lot, the lane after the one that I was in, that was parked with, there was two ladies arguing with this woman. And they were calling her Karen. And she was barking back at them. And I went in and I got the things that I needed. And I left, and on the way out, I noticed, you know, the quote-unquote Karen. I remembered her because she was carrying a tall, clear umbrella. It's so odd how, like, I pick up these things. And she was at the exit, leaning against the window, just whimpering. And it was so sad. Like, I didn't, I don't know if she was, like, wrong or not. But to see her so hurt regardless made me feel sad. I mean... It's here's kind of again, we're doing the same thing like we like we always do the opening of the layers of the onion. When we watch the onion, when you watch those TikTok videos and you see those videos of the Karens, you know, breaking glass windows or screaming at somebody, you know, you shouldn't be over here because you're in private. That's the video that you're seeing. My question always is what happens after the video is being recorded? You know, or before the video started recording, you know, we've gotten used to this laziness of being stuck on our phones and having attention pan- attention span less than 10 seconds that we like don't actually sometimes stop for a second and think, huh, maybe there's more to the story than what I'm actually seeing. Yeah, I mean, I the first thing I want to say is like the word whimpering. <laughs> what is it? I, I mean first off that's a very vulnerable thing to whimper you know, well to just let anyone see you you know to even like stand out there to even cry I think a lot of people just bottle it up and like hide it and continue to be like tough and be like yeah bitch and like get in the car you know like and drive away and no one is standing around being seen whimpering so uh congrats for karen for letting her feel her fear her feelings um i think that that is pretty cool like stand there fucking whimper like feel it you know i i think a lot of people just continue to say that doesn't hurt me you know and so i think that's cool but really cool i mean i feel bad for her obviously like is the first thing I've I've thought about this for like a week, so I'm not just like, oh, you know, poor sweet baby. I have no idea. I I mean, what is, what exactly was a whimper? <clears throat> she was just standing by the window, just crying. I mean, y- you have an excellent point. I mean, just standing there by a window crying is a very vulnerable point. I mean, we're not talking about, you know, a dirty Irish bar at eleven thirty. Okay, if it was a dirty Irish bar at eleven thirty, <laughs> you know, or some sleazy place, like okay, okay, I You're mean, at the Publix. It, it's a yeah, it's a grocery store. I mean, for God's sakes, that's where people take their kids when they they can't tolerate them. So it, it's just it's a very vulnerable place to put yourself in. How long do you think she had been standing out there 
since the argument was over. When I got out of my car, it seems that they were already like preheat of the argument. So I would assume they probably started fighting about five to seven minutes probably before I even got there. And I was in the store for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So, so you think they kept arguing or that she stood there for a long time alone? She might have been standing there for quite a long time. I have no idea. So weird. I mean, I wonder what they're arguing about. I believe it was over a parking spot. I'm not sure. You know, also, like, I use the word weird. Like, it's not weird. It's fine. But I'm I'm, I'm saying, like, to me, I haven't figured out what it means yet you know like i'm like you didn't the thing is i'm telling you from my you know visual and actual you know like life experience like life experience and adventure slash karen fine slash oh my god slash etc anyway point being said is it's again like I, that was the first thing that popped into my head is we constantly like I'm we're not we're no guilty of this we make pod clips like one minute clips so I'm no like no innocent to being feeding into the system that's why they should go watch the whole thing yeah after exactly they see the pod you know, clip. right yeah. but generally most people don't but <laughs> <laughs> the 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 issue that I run into is when you're watching these videos of Karen's whether the act is innocent or terrifying. I'm seeing it in that person's car. I don't know what happened before. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know if this guy purposely went after this lady so he can have a, a clickbait video so he can post and get millions of followers. People do that shit all the fucking time. It, you know, I feel that I was actually there. Oh, my God. We spent like 10 minutes talking about this. I love this. Karen moment, people. Hello. It's just, again, real life experiences. That's what I'm trying to get at, is real life experiences. Fuck the videos, fuck Instagram, fuck YouTube. Like, actually see the different types of people out there. Isn't that how we're supposed to, like, learn about people? And how we communicate with people? Right? Right, Carissa? You know? Yeah, I mean, there, there's so many different, I feel like... I had a few things to say about the, like, the fact that, like, we, I want to go back to where you're at, but backtrack just slightly, okay? One sec. So, what we were going to is, like, be in the moment, like, real life, but going back a little bit, I feel like, yes, what happened before? What did we not see? We don't know the context of the situation, also, like, don't people have misunderstandings all the fucking time? Like, come on. Like, figure out how to work out your misunderstanding instead of just screaming, you're a fucking Karen at some lady. Like, I don't know. I feel like how come people aren't, like, trying to fix the misunderstanding in the moment? Like, I know that people are under a lot of pressure and shit like that, but kind of don't feel like there's any excuses for, like, Screaming at people and like, you know, calling them Karens to the point where they're like standing outside of their car crying. Like, you see, that's what I loved about. See, we're like, we're, it's kind of funny, you know, old enough to remember Will and Grace, where Karen, she was an asshole and a bitch, but she had, she had a sweetness to her. Like, she could be a compassionate and caring person. Like, there still was a person that, wanted to do good to a certain degree like that you know this idea of just calling people names you know saying that you're you know you're this type of person you're sexist you know you're homophobic you know you're transphobic like all of this it's just you're a Karen it's just mean and it's uncalled for I get it, you're angry and you're pissed off, but I feel like there are so many better ways that you can communicate with people. And sometimes, you know what, then stop fucking talking. Yeah, just a lot of people leave. don't want solutions, you know? They really do just want to, like, go off on somebody. Conflicts. Yeah. Bingo. Just, that's where, like, a misunderstanding is just automatically 
pushed into like a fucking conflict. Exactly. Like people, people do not want to try to understand each other. Sometimes it just gets like crazy, but also it's like, maybe just accept the fact that you guys don't understand each other, but you use the same parking lot. Okay. And move the fuck on. Like, seriously, like, I'm sorry. Do you have to walk further? Like, what is this? Like, I don't know. It's not like the weather's bad. Like, I just, I know that in LA, somebody shot somebody over a parking spot and they yeah. died. And yeah, I mean, you told the me mall, this story. The mall parking lot. And I know people just get so fucking angry around the holidays. It was like before Christmas, you know? And like, it's just like insane. Yeah, people just get really fucking angry at each other. And I, I, don't, I, I, I mean, I lived in the city, so I, I know that I had an understanding of like seeing, like I could feel it. Like when I'd be out driving around, like I could feel that much like hate in people. Like, I'm just like, Oh, you know, like it's a little, it's a little scary. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I live, and again, this is my personal experience and me alone. You know, I live down here in South Florida, and I primarily live out here in Broward. Uh, that's a county out in South Florida. And Sounds hot. Not really. It's kind of in the ghetto, certain areas. But it's awesome. There's a lot of really great people out, and I really love the environment. Driving over here is eh, but there's a lot of really cool people, and it's a lot of fun. But West Palm, which is a county right on top of me, I just, no. It's just people are not friendly. They're just, I never really like felt any, you know, like connection or anything. That's just me personally. But it's interesting that you bring that up because they're, I feel like environments feed certain types of people. Certain people, just like magnets, flock to certain areas. And it's not being, you know, stereo stereotyping people. It's there are places for certain types of people, like just like you're not going to go to some places that your mom would love, you know? Yeah, I think it it gets pretty complicated when you get a lot of different types of people all squished together under like a lot of pressure and stress. We're all like, different. We're all different. We all think and that's, different. That's the problem is that people aren't just respecting that people are different. Like it's like just you can't make everyone the same. The whole goal is that everybody, all kinds of different people need to understand that we are all different and that that is okay. You know, but it, it's like it happens everywhere with like all cultures treating each other like they should be like each other. And it's gross and it doesn't help. It doesn't it you know what it does it it also does it just creates more and more conflict and it creates more and more chaos to the point where who cares? You know, you want to stand up for something, go for it. But at the end of the day, if you have to pour all of your fucking kishkas into it, and you're just drained, and you're just hauling like a fucking Rottweiler, what's the point? Some people don't care. I don't know. Some but people that, don't have for me, like a different option or but something. That's what I'm, but that's what I'm saying. For like me, when I try to approach situations. Maybe it's because I'm stoned all the time. I try to come in with the best attitude I possibly can. I'm like, look, this is how I feel. How are you feeling right now? Are we on the same page over here? Like, are you seeing me eye to eye? You feel me? Like, that's how I feel I'm able to get things done. Otherwise, I don't know. Does it feel like I'm getting anywhere with anybody? I know everybody like gets upset and whatever else, but I, I still just feel like there's no excuse. I mean, you can make one up if you want to. I People feel do. Like back in the day, I mean, okay, the concept of a Karen was really funny, like when it first came along, because it was like, you know, like, yeah, I know those girls. Like, I know those bitches. Like, yeah, I've seen people like that. But now it's and kind of become hurtful. Yeah, now it's like now it's like it's it's expanded a lot. Like the what defined a Karen has become like wider and wider and wider. And now people are just calling anybody 
Karen. A Karen. The same way people are being called transphobic because they don't respect uh, gender fluidity and diversity. It's like what? Just because they don't respect it? It's like don't you don't you think some people just have no opinion at all about it because it's not their thing? Like some people are just like I don't know. Like <laughs> I don't know. I mean I. I think this comes back to living in the moment. It's different for me because I have friends who identify as like they and people that I've known for a long time that identified in a different way than they do now. And so it's in my immediate life. People that I know that I have relationships with that I care about their feelings before any type of transition or whatever they want, whatever everybody wants to call it for themselves. And so to me, it's just being good to my friend, you know? And and so like, if my friend comes to me and talks to me about something that, you know, they have decided helps them or whatever, I'm like, okay, like, you know, you, you feel better this way. I can see the change in you. And you, you seem better, you know? So it's like, okay, like I'm just going to be generally, generally supportive of my friend. That doesn't mean that I would do that for every single person. Right. It's, it's, that's what I'm talking, I'm saying like living, living my own life, which comes back to what we were saying about, you know, live your own life, like be present in your life. In your own life. You know, this this kind of brings me back to when I was, when I was a kid, especially where I was growing up, having learning disabilities and being bullied was very prevalent. The amount of bullying that would lead to actual like blood and actual, I saw it. I've seen kids when I was in school that were beaten to a pulp just because they had learning disabilities. And no, we could have a whole episode just about learning. We can have a whole, yeah, we can literally, but the thing is seeing that to now, you know, how many parents want to do their best by their kids and take care of them, you know, and figure out, you know, if they have a problem, like figure out the solution with the schools. There are now, programs that are working with schools to help out these kids. There's so many things that have expanded in the past 30 years that has never existed. And awareness is important. And it's really important to see situations, real life experiences, to be able to see them for what they are and see our differences and understand that we're not all the same. We're not. But also understand as a person, like for your own self, what it means to you. Why do you care? Right? Think about it. If, if it means something to you, that means you care. So why are you caring about it? It means, that, mean, it means that much to you? Really? Well, why? I, I think it's that people will... Some people will see things as a an easy opportunity to put themselves above another person. I mean, that's why I think like a lot of that bullying with like learning disability happens is like somebody feels kind of bad about themselves and they know they can feel a little bit better for a short period of time very quickly if they put you down. I think I, a lot of times it's like a repeated behavior, especially among adolescents. I feel like a lot of people who bully are bullied. So it's probably not even conscious like decisions. Like it's probably subconscious to just kind of pick on the weaker individual because maybe where they come from, they're the weaker individual. Weaker is is shitty word, you know, but I'm saying that's how they view it because there's nothing weaker about learning in a different way at all. Sometimes it actually makes you stronger. Did I ever tell you that I spoke on the phone with the kid that bullied me for seven years in elementary school? You told me, but you could tell me again and then tell me what that conversation was like. Really quickly, um, 
I never. No, I, not quickly. <laughs> I'm just talking with you. <laughs> Honestly, this is like the most important part of the whole conversation. Most of it, it was just bullshit. But he was a failure. He was a genuine failure. And he was an addict. He was a disgusting human being. And when I got off the phone, and this may sound crazy to some people, I felt really happy. I realized for the first time in my life, this piece of shit was my tormentor. I'm like, he's a low life. I've accomplished so much more than this asshole has ever accomplished in his little fucking pinky. I've worked harder than this person has ever had. And all he accomplished to do was bother me for seven years. <clears throat> fucking bitch. See you later. Like all the life experiences that you have and had and all the feelings that you felt. And, you know, I mean, he's it just changes. got none of that. It, it, you know, it, it, it honestly opens yourself up. Like you said, bullies are the ones that have been bullied. And it's so strange because forcing opinions on other people in a way is being bullying. You're bullying somebody, whether you're doing it subconsciously or not. That's what you're doing. But you bring up an excellent point. I mean, why are you doing it? Maybe because somebody's hurting you. I think like once people become adults, it's like their own responsibility to like seek help. And I mean, you know, it's it's good to help people find help and stuff. But I was mostly talking about like kids, like. You know, like I was in elementary school when you're on. I'm, but I'm saying like once like it those things like are kind of explanations and stuff that makes sense for people who are under the age of 18 like after right. that people need to work on themselves it's their own responsibility to like figure out how to not be a fucking asshole like stop right. being an asshole like seriously you are hurting all your own opportunities you ever see like a really really successful like terrible terrible person like just like asshole of a person and they're like doing really well in life like do you ever see that well i see that on fox news and cnn a lot of the times so it apparently happens so yeah especially on fox and cnn and nbc i mean i just i think and M -M within M -M my M -M logic i would think you know like you can't be successful treating everyone around you like fucking terrible and having a horrible mindset and handling everything with anger and like you're just not going to be a successful human but on the contrary it is seen i see assholes do okay in life all the time i don't I, really i don't know i don't know how that works i but i, 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 I think don't know that either. if you're, if you're know. good to people and you have a good mindset you know then you would be even more successful but I don't know. There's times where being an asshole can can really help somebody in business. And, uh, you know, being able to feel nothing can can make a person pretty successful. Workplace. I think it's like when it comes to money, they can figure out how to be successful. I don't I'm not sure about everything else. <clears throat> you know, it's. It's odd because. As. You know, as we age, we become more wise. We, we have more knowledge on our belt and we have more things to look forward to. It's kind of strange to be that person that always has anger. And don't get me wrong, I can definitely get angry. I am Moroccan, honey. Okay, the fire is in my blood. Okay, we joke about this as Moroccans. My dad used to always tell me this as a kid. He says, as Moroccans... We have injected like jalapenos. <laughs> We're always on fire. But it's all about your Zen and your chi, you know, coming back to your inner self. And I, I, I may sound like a fucking meditation or life coach right now, but I'm not. Honestly, having less anger, being able to see situations from what they are, not for what they aren't. David's cat is having an orchestra of meows at the moment. My dog is actually being really well behaved. I think David will be back any minute. I don't know. 
And it's hard to tell sometimes, but he's having a, a moment with his cat. I think, yeah, learn, learning how to control anger. Honestly, I find anger really scary. Uh, I stay as far away from it as I can. As soon as people start to get angry, I just leave. There was a moment in my life where I found it very, like, calming. Like, I found it extremely success. Like, it it felt like this extreme success to be able to keep myself calm in, in a moment situation? where someone is, like, trying to make me angry. Like, I remember just, like, feeling this, like, you've done it now. I, I had a therapy session where I talked about like some of the arguments that I was having with my ex and how he just like wanted to just fight all the time and could never just like have a conversation about something. I mean, it didn't start that way, but eventually it was like, we can't just talk about things. It became anger all the time. I'm like, what the hell? Like I wasn't even angry anymore. And my therapist had pointed out to me that as soon as you get angry, you lose. And that really resonated with me. I, to me, that made a lot of sense. Like I was like, whoa, yeah, because like you're no longer finding a solution. You've now gotten your feathers all ruffled up. Like, I mean, it's okay to feel upset, you know, but like, I, I just feel like it's Honey, whenever you're upset, it's an important time to evaluate yourself. Look, you know, if my, that makes any sense. My family may be very pissed at me by doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. My dad bottled up his emotions his whole life. Always bottled up his emotions. And it's the one thing that pissed me off about him more than anything. What pissed me off was he was so creative. He was so out of the box. And he could be somebody that you, you could have a really great conversation with. But sometimes he could be an asshole. A real asshole. Mm -hmm. For no reason. Just because he's stressed out and he's going through something and he doesn't know how to talk. And it's like, why? Why do you have to be this difficult? Why can't you just be open and just say what's on your mind? and? I say that with full honesty, but I have to realize that for some people, especially for my dad and people that I know, that is a hard ask. It's a very yeah. hard ask. There's something that, you know, even in my scenario that I was describing, it's... With Mac, yeah. The, the, <laughs> we're going to name drop, yeah, my shitty ex. We... Like McDonald's. Yeah, it... There's something that happened in the past that has nothing to do with me. Like, and it's just, honestly, even the things that we were actually talking about was not what here's what he's experiencing. Like, it was like, I don't know, just not, not real life <laughs> is all I could say. Like, it's like, okay, like, there's no reason to be this upset about this this you know like it just what is this like i is are we even talking about what we're talking about anymore <laughs> is there something else no, no, going no. on no, no 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 so what I, what I was trying to say is just like you're i was trying to compare your ex-boyfriend to like a big mac okay because that's kind of honestly <laughs> no, i got the, that <laughs> it's kind of like that that's honestly how i feel because it's imagine <laughs> just like this bottled up you don't know what you're gonna get you honestly don't know what you're gonna get. Like you just anger all the time. I've never <sighs> met someone in my life that's just always angry. Like I was like, what is this? Like, this is just insane. Like it was just anger, like 24-7. Like that was like the only Yeah, and the funny thing is reality for me. The reality for me with the Big Mac is when I realized, Jesus, this thing makes me weigh like three pounds in two days. <laughs> so like, no thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I have to say, I lost a ton of weight. I told you I lost, like, so much weight. And then... This I'm is a like, serious problem. Yeah, well, I'm not supposed to lose any weight. And mm -hmm. I lost a whole bunch of weight without trying. And I feel like it's, like, coming back in, like, a fucking day. Like, ever since I realized that I lost a lot of weight, I was like, you know, 
I should go to the store and I should pick up a bunch of food and like have a bunch of food like around me like all the time and like make sure that I'm like eating like three times a day like for real. And all of a sudden I've gained back like the whole 10 pounds in like two days. Good. <laughs> but how does that happen? I was like, what? Like you can gain 10 pounds in two days? Like, yeah, I lost. I had two weeks ago. I lost about six pounds. And then I gained it back in a few days. So. Yeah, you can gain it all back in like two days. I was like, damn, that's terrible. Well, the thing is. I thought I, I maybe had a little bit of time to like pig out, you know, but. I do. Square one. I do. Uh, <laughs> I do intermediate. Uh, intermediate uh, fasting. And uh, we, I, we really haven't talked about this, me and you, but. I started doing this, you know, because I've had like stomach issues and I don't really eat great food. Sorry, but I eat less. Like I eat like one or two meals a day, but I try to manage those. It's kind of weird how we went from Karen all the way to this, but I love where this is going. But well, we I, started talking about Big Macs, oh and then I was, you said that because you, you could brought up eat. your boy, you brought up your boyfriend, and I'm actually eating. I don't I don't know like, if I brought up my boyfriend, but if we were going to talk, my ex boyfriend, if we were going to talk sorry. about, yeah, if we were going to talk about anger, he was definitely going to come up because, like, that's some of my experiences with anger. Like, I'm just like, you're terrifying. So I was saying, you know, I run from angry stuff, but then I also figured out how to be calm in the face of anger because that's what I deserve. I, I don't deserve for someone to make me extremely upset just because they are like, that's unfair to me. Like I was having a perfectly fine day. Like there's no, no, no reason, you. you know, like that's something that I had to learn was that, you know, like I don't, I don't deserve for to be angry all the time, you know? So if we're talking about anger, I am going to talk about some of my own personal experiences and, and growths that I've had on that subject. And I think that as far as like the Karen stuff goes, it's like just people just being really, really verbally aggressive in my opinion, you know? And and then I think pulling out the phones and videoing things takes people out of the moment. They're, so now they're everybody leaving. can see it. They're leaving the moment. They're no longer trying to solve the issue with the person. And it, yeah, the camera culture is quite strange. I remember when it became like really popular to like whip out your phone. I saw a video of this woman. Well, uh, a lady was just videoing this thing that she was seeing in a parking lot. And this guy was like standing behind someone's car, like, you better not leave. Like you can't go. And I just have to question the sanity of anyone that would put their own body behind a car that's going to go in reverse. Like you do not use your own body to stop someone from backing up. You are a fucking idiot. Like, I don't know what movie you saw where that was like a good idea, but like whoever is standing behind a car that could back up, Thinking that like it would keep a person from backing up is a fucking idiot. And I know who's in the wrong in that situation. It's quite possible both people are in the wrong. But the person that's in the wrong is the person who put their body behind an angry person's car. Like you're stupid. Like you do not stand in front of a car. You don't go behind a car when someone is in the driving. Like, <laughs> you just so don't stupid. do it. Like it's, when someone's no. behind the wheel, you don't you get do. in front or behind their car. Like no. So that's the one of the dumbest videos I've seen where they're trying to make the person who backed over the person look bad, but it's like, okay, but like, why are you standing behind a car? You know, like I have enough common sense to be like, this is, you know, just like. You don't stand in a parking lot. What fucking idiot thought you walk in a parking lot and get to your car? From like, one place to the other. It's like. What are you doing? Like, there's cars everywhere. People are backing out. Like, this is not a place to slow down, you know? But I think it all kind of ties in beautifully. It's because the mentality, mentality of anger and bullying 
and just lack of thinking. It's like, sometimes just use your common sense. You know, honestly, like, think, oh, you know, like, again, I'm talking about myself personally. I'm just looking at this situation like this bitch should be like, honey, get the fuck out of here. I'm going to whoop her ass. I'm going to make her regret her life right now. I'm like, I'm out. You know what I mean? Like, that's just me. But I can understand where they're coming from, though, too. I would, so I've never seen you eat a Big Mac on the podcast before. Is that a first for you? Oh, I had a leftover sandwich, and this little smush, this little mush over here is making some... She wanted a cuddle. Okay, she's running on my lap. Yeah, your cat was freaking out, and I had to, like, talk like Garth. Wayne left. Wayne left for a minute, and mm-hmm. Garth was left on the camera, and it was it was hard, but I carried it by myself yeah. for a minute. For yeah. a minute, yeah. And then we it was um, a, it could have been a little longer than a minute. At first, I just talked about you, and then I was like, okay, now I should talk. You know, like yeah, never about Dave. Uh, yeah, Dave's know. gone. Nerve wracking. The Twixie's here. I I also no, want to no, say no. if we're talking about Karens that I feel like a Karen is like like yelling out the word Karen is a really like easy way for someone to shut up a woman, which I think is like not something that our culture really needs at this moment. I don't need that right now. I don't, I never need that. Excuse me. <laughs> That's, That's Karen saying. to you, my darling. I feel like sometimes a woman actually has something to say. And and someone will just scream Karen at them. And it's like, it's an easy way to like quiet someone that is like, you know, has a, a differing opinion than yourself. You're right. I mean, the woman that would have the umbrella, she could have been completely in the right. You know, maybe this person hit her car, you know, and damaged some. I don't know. And then maybe this, they're both Karens, you know, like that. Maybe a lot of times both people can just be assholes. Like there might not always be a right or wrong. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. Woo. I think a lot of times there is a right and wrong, and somebody's the asshole, though. You know. I had to hold my bless you. I had to you. hold her. Da- I, had to hold her da- I had to hold her down. What the cat? Yeah, because she jumps. Louis is doing a good job. Oh, you know, it's really nice because it's, I mean, right now the worst days for me are Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because I don't work my second job. Oh, we got Twixie right here and Louis. Oh. That was Louis on the camera. He's just a big black blob, like an outline of a dog. I gave Louie a bath today. It was pretty oh cool. Boy. Yeah, it was so me, easy. You told me he was stinky. Dude, he, he farts so bad, especially today. I was like, what is going on? Yeah, he's a pug. And they do that, I guess. One of my coworkers has a pug. One of my new coworkers. New coworkers. I have nine new coworkers. Nine. I told you my manager is amazing. Probably one of the I best did, managers. You I've know ever what had. I can't. You know what I can't understand is how bridal stores, bridal like wedding stores, make money. It because it's like, oh my god, I gotta turn off these phones. Sorry. Oh boy. Wholesaling. Sorry. They get half. It's wholesale, you know? I'm pretty sure. I mean, she never told me that or anything, but like most businesses, like you get half as much as, so you double your money, basically. So if a dress costs $200, they charge you get 400 four- Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the dress itself is worth you know, none of them are that cheap, but like, let's say a dress is like a thousand bucks. And this is not, I don't know that this is how this works where I work, but I know in wholesaling in general, it's like, if a dress costs like a thousand dollars, you buy it like from the people 
for $500 and then you get an additional like $500 or, you know, like spend like 250 basically. And then you, as like your input. And it's and profitable for it them to be able to pay the workers. It could be even better than that. I'm just not even really sure. Like, I I don't know how how she turns a profit, but I do know how many customers do they get a day. A lot. Are you serious? I mean, on like the weekends, yeah. But like, I could see what you mean. Like, how does the bridal store make any money? I still kind of wonder the same thing. They're open. But, ev- they're open every single day of the year, pretty much. Sundays, Except- the the one I'm at, they're not open. Okay, so they're open pretty much the... It's just, how many people a year are getting married? I I don't know. It's just... See, for me, I have a very difficult time with numbers. People come from, like, all over, you know? Really? Yeah, people come from all over. Like, and again, this is just, like, generalized. It's not, like, just the place that I sell gowns at. But people come from, you know, all the surrounding cities. So... And then, honestly, like, people are getting married a lot in the Midwest. And people are getting married, like, more than once, too. And then people have, like, six kids, you know? And then they all get married. So, like, it's it's a whole other lifestyle. Um, No, I know you're talking about, yeah, in the Orthodox community. Okay. I shouldn't say this, but, like, my brother and sister alone together, I think I have... Over like 14 nieces and nephews, just something crazy like that. And they're and they all, all get married. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's really crazy to see like some of the older ones, they're they're like adults now, you know, and they're gonna start their own life. And you're right, they're gonna get married. Uh they may start a family. I guess gowns galore. You you need to you need to give the public. What I mean, they I ask. can I totally would just think the same thing too. Like, you know, like how often are people really like, you know, buying a dress because like it's a thing that you kind of are only supposed to do once or whatever. There's no supposed to, but it's like, you know, theoretically it's something that happens one time or so. And so it's like how much business could someone actually pull in? But I mean, it's, it's beautiful to see all the people that they give out champagne. Is yeah. That- oh my god. Yeah. It's given me an opportunity to like interact with like the people out here. I really really appreciate that opportunity. Oh my god. I get you- to see people as people, you know, like you it's, get to- it's really interesting. They're not dollar signs at all. They're like it's an experience. And I get to like watch like a really special and be part of a really special moment for somebody. And like they're so loving like People give out like the best compliments ever. Like they're just, they'll say the nicest things in the world, like to the person that they're there with. And it's like every moment is like all this like little heartfelt, like lovey stuff. Like it's a really special environment. Like I, I definitely wanted to work somewhere like that, like very badly. You know what I love about that too? Like you're able to help a bride pick out a beautiful dress you know, and I'm not, I'm not generally like a family type of person per se right now, maybe at least, but I think it's a really beautiful thing. You know, people are like, oh, why do you spend, you know, X amount of money? Da, da, da. Like ask, ask my brother, Mac, you know, like he had a small wedding, but his wife had a, you know, wedding gown and like they had a wedding and they had a honeymoon. It's it's just a special thing to do with somebody like you're making a big life change, you know, be part of the experience. Go out and find yourself a nice dress, you know, and get yourself a nice venue. Bring your family and friends and people together and celebrate. Whether it be religious or faith, I think whatever whatever way you celebrate a wedding, I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it just it's a really nice way to bring people together and it's a great way to celebrate something just so beautiful. Yeah, I see a lot of refreshing. women with their mothers, mothers with their daughters. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and I, that's I see really that sweet. That, it is a really special thing. It's a special thing for women. And it's, you know, something that they did themselves and now they get to, you know, help out. And I see a lot of people who treat people with respect, a lot of respect and understanding. It's really cute when the, the bride tries on the one that the mom wants and she doesn't want it at all, but she's going to try it on. Cause that's it's always the one wants. with the ruffles. Is it the one always with the She's ruffles? Like I just have to see you in it. Like it, it's the one with the sleeves, or like yeah. you know, with the weird thing that like the mom liked, and and the daughter's always like, "Yes, we'll try it on," you know, like no matter, even though they're not even gonna like, you know, it's not gonna be the one. People do nice things for each other, like you know, like they kind of deal with each other. You know, like she'll she'll try it on for her and she'll, you know, and then the mom will be OK with the one that she really likes. Like, my, it's, you know, it's this, very sweet. My sister, she actually designed her own gown. That's cool. Yeah, because she didn't. My <clears throat> my sister, just like me, um, I come from an artistic background. Um, my sister is an artist. She's a lot better than I am. But she didn't like what she found and she found somebody that could help her design like the perfect, you know, gown. And I, when she told me that story and we've talked about it, it's just a beautiful, you know, thing to think about. That is a way of celebrating a beautiful experience like that, you know, picking out, you know, the, the dress or, you know, sometimes making your mom happy or your mother, your future mother-in-law happy. I know that sometimes does happen. You know, like future mother-in-law comes in, you know, she's like, eh, try yeah, that on. Yeah, they come too, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really cute. awesome. I, like I love my this. Yeah. We both. I, I, it's a good environment. Like yeah. it, it really is. And I feel very comfortable there. And there's like a little bit of nostalgia because I used to work there a long time ago. So I, yeah, I really a- wanted a small group of people, like a, a small business you know you get to doll really up to going there too you get to put on I like do. some makeup I get, I get to wear yeah yes. i get to wear yes. like all black and kind of like yeah you know and i'm around fancy things like i really like that like you know like all the the fabrics are like you know like Satin, they feel amazing the lore. stuff is like hand beaded you know, and like it's just beautiful you know what like, i want I, you know it's what a I great saw? environment i saw i was watching one of those like bartle shows and of course the guy, he's gay and fabulous, darling. And they're picking out this gorgeous dress. And she wanted one that had like flowers. Like these like, and he was just like, honey, they're going to wilt. We cannot do real flowers. And they made a compromise and they got like these fake flowers that they put in. And it was like a see-through, but it was like, cover, you know, like, I forgot what it's it's called. There's a, it's the name of the material. I could see through, but like, it was like cut down here. It was beautiful and like kind of draped down. And oh my God, I just, I just go crazy. Okay, I'm going to admit it. I love, I love gowns. I love dresses. I like dresses. Oh, I like, love dresses. I sometimes block out that they're all wedding gowns and... And I'm just like, these are amazing dresses, you know, like, because they really are. Masterpieces. Even if they, came in, I, they are. Oh, they're, they're art. There's, yeah, there's something really, really gorgeous about gowns. Like, I wish that I could be around all types of gowns, but that is why I got into this was because I grew up doing pageants. And so I had a lot of dresses growing up and I had like nice gowns um, that were like, you know, structured in the same way that a wedding gown is. And I know things about how they fit in the different shapes and the different fabrics and, you know, how they're fitted to people and what alterations can be done on them and just different things like that. And so that's why I applied for that job because I was like, I know dresses and I know, I know trying on dresses. I know dress fitting rooms. Like, I know that stuff. Yeah, and yeah. there's, like, different things that... It's funny because I'm a dude and I know this stuff. Like, especially the type of figure that you're dealing with. You know, your bust or, you know, the shape of your hips. Certain things just don't look good. You know, if you're somebody that's very curvy, to have, like, you know, this thing that's, like, kind of cut and tight by your waist, it, no. 
it just it's going to look weird. Like, and that's the thing where alterations come in, which can really make the experience even better. You get to get to give somebody something that is just right for them. You know, it's made to fit them just right. It is interesting how, like, I mean, they have, oh, the store itself, I mean, I'm going to slaughter it, but I know that there's hundreds of gowns, like hundreds, like well over 500 gowns. And it is interesting how each one, each person that comes in gets a different one. Like, it's like, it really is like, one of these in here is like yours Today and i've even colors? seen like some weird type of fate stuff happen like where it- this girl like imagined like everything that she wanted and then there was one that was like that you know and it's like what? like i'm not even kidding like it's just like i don't know i think that there is like I there think it people is. can like matrix it up yeah no i is there what are there colors they have a di- i mean they can all be ordered in different colors Ooh. but yeah, because I've, I was watching, this was really sweet. There was a, a gothic, they were very into romantic goth. Her, the person she was marry, marrying, he was an author and he had a love of poetry, like Edgar Allan Poe. And their wedding was going to be like very, like all black. So she mm-hmm. had a black lace dress. Yeah, the, there's some black gowns at the store. But what was like, I'm sorry, I'm getting into this. But she had a pro, like, they had a problem where she felt that the dress was too, like, when they were trying different things, it was just too plain. And then they found, like, this one that was, like, lace. And I didn't know this, that, like, lace is super expensive. It's, like, super, super expensive. And I think the dress was, like, eleven or $12,000. Wow. Yeah. That's a very special. It's a very special gown. The the most I think I've seen is like a $5,000 gown. <clears throat> I don't think I've seen anything more expensive than that in my own experience. It, yeah, I don't know. See, this it's is crazy. What, this is what Karen should be doing. Instead of fighting with people in parking lots... We should get them to get onto HGTV or something. Get them cable and let them watch, you know, bridal shows or something. You know, this is more entertaining. Way more entertaining. I don't don't think the, I mean, I hope that I don't get screamed at in a parking lot. Like, you know, I mean, that's, that's part of the reason I left the city. We, I feel the both of us, we are the type of people that if we ran into a Karen, I've run into Karen's. And I've actually calmed down a Karen on several occasions. It's it's honestly just, I have, okay. Can I give you an example? Yeah. I had a while ago, I met somebody at a bar and this was a, this was a, a bit ago. And he told me that I was being too flamboyant. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I, I said to him nicely, I said, look, I I said to him, you know, take what you want, but you you have to understand something here. If we're friends, if we're just here chilling, it doesn't matter my behavior. At the end of the day, like, are we having a good time? Does it matter that I'm being flamboyant? Why are you bringing this up? And he just wanted to pick at a fight. And then he just looked at me. He's like, all right, fine. And then we didn't talk, like, until... Like a few hours later, but whatever. But it's those things. It's being able to just realize you can. I, I could have retaliated, like, oh, excuse me, you're calling me flamboyant? Like, what are you, some type of Karen? I could have done that 100%. But I responded, we're like, why does this matter right now? Why Why are you bringing this up? So that, yeah, that's one I mean, example I can up, think of. Yeah. You stood up for yourself. You know, and just said, like, I don't want to be treated by this way. And you used, like, words to explain, like, why it's not acceptable. And you didn't just, like, get, like, angry. You know, I feel like that the anger, (laughs) anger doesn't help anything. Like, it's just, like, insane. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the membrane. Oh, my God. Life. I, I really, I really love, like, I guess in a way talking or conversational wise 
taking in the ideas of when you're dealing with somebody, you're, you're dealing with bullying, you're dealing with anger. All of these things over time can be accomplished by just seeing things and being able to open up and explain things. Because a lot of the times, if you don't explain, sometimes people get pissed at you. Trust me. You don't think like people get angry at me for being too open? Trust me. There's a lot of people that don't even talk to me anymore because I'm too open. And that's their choice. They can't handle it. And that's okay. Like that means that we're just not the right fit, but I cannot find myself to be angry and closed like a fucking glass jar all the time. Jesus Christ, honey. No. Well, I wonder if she just like screamed at those people until they disappeared, you know, like, and then once they're gone, she like cry. Maybe. <sighs> well, I know when that woman screamed at me and said that she was going to poison my dog. Oh, that was awful. Oh, my God. I cried a lot. It's kind of. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> 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 No, it's weird because when I walk Twixie, my neighbors love her, you know, and people like I'm dead serious. Some people like walk out on their balcony and they'll just walk or walk by and they're just like, oh, look how cute. People will be like, oh, my God, where's Twix? You know, where's your cat and stuff like that. And having that, you know, I feel safe walking her around, you know, and, and you know what? Honestly, we should have brought this up earlier. You know, um, the fact that it's like fear mongering, plain and simple. What? You're eating a cookie? I was eating a cookie and I was embarrassed. I didn't want anybody to know. So I turned off my microphone so that there were no crunches. Oh, my God. I was eating you know, a cheeseburger on this podcast. It wasn't a cookie. It was a piece of mango. I've just been like absolutely obsessed. obsessed. With, yeah, it's Tried like mango. a thing. Yeah, I, feel I think you. it's because like I've been trying to make myself like happy recently, like and like really enjoy like my new life. And I have been looking for things that like make me happy. And I like at first couldn't find like the type of mango that I wanted. And then once I found it, I bought like tons of it. And then I'm just like so happy. This is like I go on these like little obsessions. Like remember when I was obsessed with peach tea? Like I have just been like peach tea in it up like these past like this past week and mango. I, you know, it, it's interesting <laughs> because um, working because, you know, I'm kind of excited about it, like working in the new kitchen and just kind of playing around with different flavors and different things. I was telling you this on the on the phone and I, I want to I, I, I haven't spoken to him in a long time. Stanley. Stanley, like, he lives in Israel. He's an, a fantastic chef. He's a really incredible human being. And he really taught me a lot. And a lot of what I'm giving to this kitchen, what I'm giving to Black Flamingo, is what Stanley taught me. And it's just, I, I, I love those. I love those things. I love those ways of people, instead of us judging and being judgmental like opening up and seeing how a different person reacts or creates and like i've learned so much just by watching other people do other things and just like huh oh okay you, i'll give you a great example okay stanley he loves ceviche loves mm, ceviche i like ceviche and he once gave me a ceviche he put in i'll never forget this he put lime and chilies in the ceviche and he put it on this bread. I, I, it was like, like a, I forgot what was on it. It was like a, a spice with oil. Bro, it was so freaking good. You know what he told me he did? He was like, you mix the ingredients first, and then you put the fish in there. Yeah. And just like, I just seeing him do this stuff, I was like, and now being in that environment, I'm like, a lot of stuff just flashes back. And it just, for once... There's no need of anger. There's no need of stress. It's just openness. Plain and simple. You're in a good environment. I know the kitchen isn't always great. You know? 
not always a great environment to watch other brides get married when you're not. But Oh, I'm fine. I really am. No, but that's <laughs> what I'm trying to say is you can see on the flip side of just how beautiful it is. You know, like you get to be the person that's able to help this person be a part of this experience, you know? I mean, I could I have been married awesome. if I wanted to. Oh, for sure. You know, but like I don't want to just, you know, I, I just, I know that like my story is my story and like they've got their story too. And like, I think, I mean, I don't have any problem with marriage. I just, for, I just, it's not my time right now, you know, like, and that is fine. Like, I, I don't know. I think that it is weird to yes. that, but yeah, I, I think it's also like a really good, way to like pull myself into just being there for other people in like a great moment. You know, I mean, like think of all the moments that I've had in my life that they haven't. I know. (laughs) And, you know, I mean, like we all do different things. Like, you know, it's like, this is a really special time for them. You know, probably as special as like the first commercials that I worked on and, you know, different things like that. Like, it's like, you know, it's life in a loop and it's life in a way where you can open up the loop and see the whole entire sing- singular line, just one life experience after the next, as you I say, wanted to be part of something special, you know? Oh, for sure. And I, you know, to kind of, to kind of end this off, I, what I love the most about human experience and human interaction. Look, like I, I have a cell phone. We all do. But it's just nice to be around people and just to talk to people. I, I don't I don't know how to say this any simpler. And it's like, I'm saying this as an artist, from an artist mind. We got to keep ourselves healthy, mentally and physically. And it's so easy to slip, just like so many other people have before. But... I don't want to be one of those. I I know that what you're doing takes a hell of a lot of energy, you know? So like it, it can be hard for people to find the, the amount of time away from, you know, the work that they have to do to right. be as creative as they want. And some people weren't able to build a career in the thing that they want to be creative in. And, you know, I just, I have to be understanding that it's not always just like whatever you, you know, want it to be like, you you just, you have to find time, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I mean, some people are against like really, really crazy odds, you know, like taking care of family members and like different stuff like that. I think that what I want to say is like to encourage people to, to find a plan to work creativity into their their lives. Let your inner artist flourish. It takes time, it takes healing, and it takes work. But all in all, I, I it's it's the genuine way to succeed if you're an artistic soul. Yeah, I mean sometimes you just have to work and be a robot and tell until it's time. Yeah, but that's just you know? that's just a reality. The reality is that you sometimes have to do the things you don't want to do. And, you know, it, and I believe it's temporary. Oh yeah, for sure. Nothing in life is permanent. And <laughs> with that point, another great point, Krissa. Fortunately, this podcast is also temporary, but we have many yeah, more episodes. Permanent. Yes, we do. Can you imagine if we just had a live feed of podcasts, just like twenty four seven, just you and I, and we never stopped talking? Permanent podcast. That's what we'd call it. I would probably (laughs) die of an exhaustion, but I don't know who'd go first. It's like Russian roulette, but only weirder. We definitely don't make enough money to do that. Uh, We definitely (laughs) don't. Well, we've reached that point, ladies and gents and non-binary people. Podcast has ended. So this will conclude your episode. Dum dum dum. But uh, if you want to learn more of the podcast, you know where to find us. We're at Lost in the Groove Pod. Um, we're on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And what is it, something you can do for the podcast? 
Write a review. Write a fucking review. And guess you what? Don't, yeah. Just one sentence even. <sighs> Just fucking say something. Say something. God. I'm actually Open your mouth. Be heard. Oh Speak your mind. No, I actually yeah. started on Instagram, which is our official fan page. There's a stories, like there's a highlights you can click on where we have all of our reviews. So I'm gonna post those so everybody can see our thoughts of the podcast. But anyway. We love y'all. We're going to go. We have shit to do. Bye, everybody. (laughs) Bye. Thank you.